did those kids get the guns? One of the most important questions asked after this week's shooting at STEM School Highlands Ranch. Lots of speculation, and now an answer from Kevin Vaughn from our Nine Wants to Know team. Kevin? Kyle, law enforcement sources have confirmed that the weapons recovered at the school were stolen from a gun safe belonging to the father of the 18-year-old suspect. He and the other suspect, who's a juvenile, are suspected also of using an ax and a crowbar to break into that safe and then attempting to light a fire in the family's home before they left for the school. Um, it, the, the fire did little damage. Kyle, we expect to learn a lot more about this tomorrow when formal criminal charges are expected to be filed against both suspects. So there's a, at least one point where there could have been an issue both at the house and at the school, but that never transpired. Exactly. Right. Um, the, the, the situation of the house was described absolutely as a break-in and a theft mm -hmm. and an attempt to light a fire. And that fire. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Survivors of the STEM school shooting were invited to a candlelight vigil last night. Hundreds of them came. When it became clear that it was actually a gun control rally organized by activists and featuring Democratic politicians, those students stormed out. They said that Senator Michael Bennett, Congressman Jason Crow, and the Brady Gun Control Group were politicizing their grief. They then returned to the gymnasium. They took over the microphone, and they held the event they wanted, a remembrance of their classmate killed in the shooting. It was because it was thrown at us that we all got angry, and that's the emotions we felt. So we all went outside and started holding what people think was a riot, even though it was us grieving for each other, supporting each other. This is about Kendrick. It's not about uh, gun control or anything of those sort of things. Um. The Brady Gun Control Group apologized to the community. Senator Bennett and Congressman Crow did not. Spokeswomen for both elected officials did say today that the STEM students should have been heard from at that event. Neither would answer our questions about whether a gun control event billed as a candlelight vigil was appropriate the day after the shooting. Regardless of where you stand on gun control, those STEM students standing up and walking out should be admired because their grief is their own. Their grief is not for sale or for rent to interest groups that feel that those students should support their cause. STEM Highlands Ranch is a diverse community. Different views united now in grief. Some surely agree with those gun control proponents. Others obviously do not. Their loud chants of mental health, mental health, suggest that a lot of them see that as the root cause of the threat. And that's their choice to make. In Parkland, Florida, many students decided to add their voices to the gun control movement. STEM school Highlands Ranch students may choose to make mental health their rallying cry. But that choice belongs to the students who bear the burden of the grief. It does not belong to the adult activists and the politicians who tried to co-opt it for their cause last night. When tragedy strikes, the impact is not only felt by the victims, but by the first responders who arrive at the scene and the dispatchers who take those frantic calls for help. Our Nelson Garcia talked to South Metro Fire Rescue about how they handled the stress. Showing a sprinkler alarm zone 80 SDI 33. When the calls come in to dispatchers like Nate Keller. And they're unable to verify the exact building came in on the main address. When the calls go out to EMTs like Chris Wells. Attention all units getting information on a shooting STEM school 8757 Ridgeline Boulevard. During chaotic scenes like the STEM school shooting, they can't help but be affected. And you're hearing firsthand, you're hearing the gunshots through the phone lines. You're hearing the overhead announcements going over the school PA. You're hearing the fear in their voice. When you're doing it, you're, you're in go mode and you're in action mode. And as soon as that adrenaline stops and the reality of the situation kind of comes to the front of your mind, it's hard to process. Power 35 micro. And even if you can't hear it in his voice. From shooter is not contained, we do have multiple patients. You can see it in Keller's face on Tuesday. It's never easy to say that it doesn't take a toll would be a lie. Because it may happen where a month down the road, you're fine. Two, two years down the road, you run something, it may not even have anything to do with the call that you just ran, and it triggers something. So they support one another and receive help for mental health, professionally, and from people like Susan Ryan. She is a Labrador bred by Canine Companions for Independence. Ryan brought these service animals in training to help dispatchers deal with the stress of Tuesday's shooting. There's both just the cute factor with a puppy like Melina, but there's also some real science behind how an animal does decrease stress. Tower 35, we'll show you on scene investigating, attempting to locate building. A real need for real people 
at the other end of that 911 call. We're in tune with each other. We check in on each other. It's our second family. How are they handling the stress? How are they handling the calls? What do they need? For next, I'm Nelson Garcia. South Metro Fire Rescue has support services for mental health to help responders deal with crisis. And to say the puppies, puppies help a lot too. Denver's going to pick a mayor. No, I promise for real this time, they're going to pick a mayor in 26 days. There's a head-to-head -head runoff in that race. Plus, you got the clerk and recorder race runoff, five city council seat runoffs. You know, there is a way to handle these crowded elections with just one vote. It's called ranked choice voting, and our politics guy, Marshall Zellinger, is here to explain. So, Marshall, ranked choice voting takes a big old field, field of candidates and produces a winner in each. And to demonstrate how that would have worked, at least with this mayor's race, we put up this example on Facebook and Twitter earlier today, asking you to vote for your favorite next segment. For instance, I like next question because I get to answer people's questions. But instead of just voting for your one favorite, like voters did, as I make this move all over the place, like voters did on Tuesday, you get to rank them in order and you only get one election after that. What's your favorite segment on next? The most Colorado thing we've seen today? It's a sign. We do this in our everyday lives. We rank preferences. We sort of choose our favorite ice cream. Former Denver Elections Director Amber McReynolds is now working on innovative ways to make it easier to vote. Like in 2017, when she tested people on ranking the next best Broncos quarterback instead of just picking one. I had my eight-year-old daughter fill it out and she did fine and put a right in. A ranked choice voting system would give us winners on election night instead of requiring a runoff election 28 days later. If you donate to campaigns, if you get tired of seeing commercials, if you get tired of getting calls, all that, we're essentially cutting that in half by there being one process. Denver Elections is having to prepare another $800,000 election because candidates in seven races did not get enough votes to win outright. Denver dumped ranked choice voting. We had it. We had it for 20 years and it failed and the voters repealed it. Councilman Kevin Flynn has researched this option since it would require a change in city charter. He found out Denver used ranked choice voting from 1916 to 1935 and then voters repealed it. The Oscars used it to pick best picture and Birdman people, really? Okay, let's give you a real example using the mayor's race from Tuesday night. Since no one got 50%, you would eliminate the person in last place, Chairman Siku. For the 1,300 people who voted Siku number one, their number two choice would then be counted. You end up with a system where the people who thought that the last place finisher would have made the best possible mayor, the person that they thought was second only to that last place person gets those votes. Here's an example for next. The people who did not like you've crossed the line, which was our least popular answer. The five people who voted for that. When you go to round two, those five people, you go to their number two choice. It added some to the most Colorado thing we've seen today. And also, that's not how you Colorado. And next question, you eliminate the most lowest, the next lowest, sorry, next question and add their next choice. And that gives us the most Colorado thing we've seen today as the most popular winner here after three rounds in one election instead of a runoff a second time around. If I don't like the choice of the people, is there a way for me to make a significant donation and just get the person that I want? We no. Can, no, no, wait, that's the system we have now. That's not the new system you're describing. That's okay. That's what we have now. All right. Which one won again? Most Colorado, most Colorado thing? thing we've seen. Awesome. We have that coming up. Cool. Thank you, Marshall. The most powerful people in the Denver mayor's race right now are the ones who aren't in it. Their challengers, Lisa Calderon and Penfield Tate, who did not make the runoff, but each of them do have double-digit percentages of supporters who are looking for a sign of whether they should back Mayor Michael Hancock or support Jamie Gillis or not vote at all in the June 4th runoff. Now, before you assume that all of the challengers are going to unite against Mayor Hancock, listen to Calderon and Tate dance around saying whether they would vote for Gillis when I asked them in our debate. Would you vote yeah. for, any, for Mayor I, Hancock over any of the other challenges? I would vote for Penfield Tate next, yes. Okay. Ms. Gillis, anybody but Hancock and I would off. vote for anybody but Hancock, either Lisa or Penn. Mr. Tate, anybody but Hancock? I'd vote for Lisa Calderon. Yeah, that wasn't a ringing endorsement of Jamie Gillis from the other challengers. Both Tate and Calderon are teasing announcements in the coming days. Seems pretty unlikely that either would endorse Mayor Hancock, but if they don't get behind Gillis... What a huge blow to her chances. I should also mention, Hancock and Gillis will debate live on 9 News Tuesday, May 21st. Marshall and I will moderate. Republican Senator Cory Gardner has a new Democratic challenger today. 
Seems like it's almost every day he gets a new one. Alice Madden, former majority leader at the state capitol, joins a busload of Dems who want to replace America's most vulnerable senator up for re-election in 2020. Madden is promising a campaign focused on clean energy, education, and middle-class economic issues. She will be here on Next for a conversation on Monday. An update on a famous spot in Denver we've been watching for you, the Bonnie Bray Tavern. It has been deemed non-historic. We told you the owner applied for that status last month. The posting on the building set neighbors all aflame. The building had the potential to be protected as a historic landmark, but no one in the community applied to make that happen. The most Colorado thing we've seen today, spring graduation in the snow and rain. Colorado restaurants competing in the Super Bowl of serving great food are talking a little smack. Where Frost is more fun, younger sibling. I might get in trouble for saying that. And we will return to a tough topic that prompted passionate responses from many of you. Whether celebrating the young heroes of the school shooting encourages more kids to risk their lives. That's next. The most Colorado thing we've seen today is a spring graduation in the snow and rain. Folsom field covered in snow for this morning's graduation CU Boulder. Looks like the grads loved it. You're watching a snowball fight. A shout out to our favorite grad today, our next intern, Lena Takahashi. She has been a gift to us behind the scenes here, and I'm not just talking about all the delicious food that she makes. She is an honors graduate from CU. She is going places. Watch out world headed next to work at NBC. Oh my goodness. Wonderful girl and a wonderful change in the weather pattern. The broad area of low pressure responsible for the cold, the rain and snow. Well, it's finally beginning to move out of the area. The rain and snow winding down after a day with highs in the lower 40s. We should be closer to 70. The winter weather and travel advisories in the high country have canceled out at 6 o'clock. We still may see a stray rain or snow shower here down low, but for the most part, the precipitation coming to an end here. And even with cloudy skies tomorrow, it'll be a little bit drier and then we'll start to kick off a warming trend. We're going to get into the 50s tomorrow and then back to sunshine and 70s just in time for the weekend. But due to the clearing skies tonight, I want you to know Denver and the Front Range and Eastern Plains under a freeze watch as our forecast low is right at 30. Tomorrow, cloudy skies, a drier day, 55. We get into the 60s on Saturday, 70s for Mother's Day and mid-70s. Some of the models, Kyle, suggesting 80 degrees early next week. That's a little more like it. We will take that. Viewer named Mark Williams emailed during the break to say the first responder at the STEM school was Kendrick Castillo. He's right. We ended last night with a provocative question from another viewer about whether highlighting those young heroes who stopped the school shooter only encourages more kids to risk their lives. Let's read some of your reactions, then take some of your questions to our resident psychologist, Dr. Max Wachtel. I'm promoting heroic acts. Heroes are not made, they're born. They're too young to be sacrificed for the greater good. To want your kid to survive at the cost of others' lives. I just wanted to comment on the comment. I've been looking at a lot of viewer comments online. Lots of different questions and concerns and opinions out there. For parents and media, I would say that the advice is similar. You know, we, we don't want to downplay the amazing acts. Thank goodness they did that because they probably saved lives. That's heroic. It is not right that they were in that spot. That's the message that we have to get across. You know, it, it can be very helpful for someone like that to get that kind of positive praise. That's not a bad thing. That's not going to impede his, his grieving process. Uh, at the same time, you know, he, he's a kid. He, it, it, he's going to get hit with it at some point, probably. Um, you know, and, and when the, the media spotlight kind of dies down, that may be when he really starts to have to come to terms with it. What do you tell your kids? Do you tell your kids to keep themselves safe first and foremost? Or do you tell them, take yourself to the fight? You, know, you do what you need to do to, to disarm that shooter. You, know, you can have that conversation with them. Um, I can't tell you what to, to think or what to say um, other than that you need to think through it pretty, pretty clearly before you start talking with your kids about it. What we know very strongly is that um, the values that we instill in our kids very strongly impact how they behave and how they act out in the world. That's all well and good unless um, your kid is in an incredibly anxiety provoking situation. Um, and then sometimes values kind of get pushed out the window and they get they move more into like a fight or flight kind of mode.
Boulder's Frasca Food and Wine is celebrating a national honor, the James Beard Award for Service. Arno Brennan was served some perspective at the restaurant next door. We're a pizzeria. They're northern Italian fine dining. Parents have it easy when siblings get along. We, we do something different. Despite their differences. We're their baby brother in a way, or baby sister, baby sibling. Not all siblings are so willing to share. We share a lot of stuff. We share employees sometimes. John Sismanis. It's a very symbiotic relationship. The chef de cuisine at Boulder's Pizzeria Locale. I made a lot of pizzas. The restaurant shares walls and owners with Frasca Food and Wine. Where Frasca's more fun than your sibling. Um, I might get in trouble for saying that. Now, the bosses are too busy celebrating. Frost Food and Wine won the James Beard Award for service. It's like an Oscar for food. To get recognition on a national level, like for something like the James Beard Awards is like... Hard to put into words. It's amazing, like it's humbling. How proud this family is. It's just as exciting for us. It's great to be a part of that team and we got to have a lot of their staff come celebrate with us last night. Older brother won, but siblings share the celebration. I think that everybody gets that it is a pretty big deal and everybody's pretty excited about it. For next, I'm Noel Brennan. Our Steve Steger pours one out for the Avs and your feedback next. The Avs incredible playoff run and Steve Steger's less than incredible playoff beard are finished. To use an overused cliche, it was a roller coaster of the season with as many twists and turns as the coasters near the Pepsi Center parking lot. The Avalanche started the year on fire, everyone thinking they could be a contender for the cup. Then winter came and they could not win, no matter how hard they tried. But this team was determined. And when the experts gave them little odds to make the playoffs, they pushed. When they said they'd never beat the Calgary Flames, all it took was five games. When everyone said the Sharks would swim away with round two, they pushed them to seven games and only lost on a technicality. But instead of looking back at that terrible call, even though the league should be ashamed, let's look forward. Good hockey is back in Denver. Names like McKinnon, Landeskog, Rantanen, and Makar taking the place of Forsberg, Sackick, and Wah. I know the bandwagon has stalled for this season, but it is still moving. Jump on board. You will not regret it. These next few years are going to be special. Candy Gobrick says, I'm disappointed in those kids who walked out. They, of all people, should know this is a national crisis. Candy, I heard them say that they think that it's a national crisis, a mental health one. As I said, I think that choice is their own. See you next time.